Right, Vision Gran Turismo cars. Let's see what we've got here. Mercedes quite swoopy. Toyota Dodge, two and a half thousand horsepower. Ooh. Mazda, Audi, Bugatti, hmm? McLaren. Let's have a closer look at that. But why drive it virtually when the real thing's outside? Yes, I know it looks like a one-off, and right now it is. But this is the McLaren Vision Gran Turismo car made real, and it's going into production. In the past, Gran Turismo's Vision cars have been turned into real-life models. Some have even become drivable one-offs. But until now, they've never gone any further. This is the first ever Vision car you'll be able to buy in reality, not just for a million credits in the game. Over 2.7 million pounds. Not this one because it's in camo because it's a prototype, so it's actually probably worth more than that. But McLaren is gonna build 25 of them. Now here's the weird thing. Right now, you know what this car is called, but I don't because what you're watching here actually happened six weeks ago. And as I talk, McLaren hasn't decided on a name for this yet. So it's known by its internal code name, P94. But we don't want you to miss out. So here it is. And yes, I know these look like Gran Turismo screen grabs, but they're actually real images. Without disguise, but with a new name, the Solus GT. So what we need is someone to talk us through it. This is Fred Martindai, program manager for this outlandish project. What are the challenges of turning a Vision Gran Turismo car into reality? Because like famously, in the game, it had a line your tummy driving position, but oh, this one hasn't. Yeah, yeah, it, it doesn't. So you're right, there's two, two big changes from, uh, from that, that concept that you see in the game. The first one, yeah, the driving position. So we, we chose to leave that kind of Superman style, arms outstretched, head kind of crooked back mm. um, in, in the world of uh, virtual reality. Kind of the feeling that that would have created, yes, I can totally see how that is a, a sensory overload, being, being in that driving position. Mm. Uh, but we chose to, uh, to go with the conventional um, driving position there's a reason why um, all cars are set up like this. You know, driver comfort, I think, is a, is a, is a real um, key consideration in, into that. And if you imagine the, the packaging challenges around getting a driver to lie forward and the length that that kind of uses, we've been yeah. encroaching into key uh, space that we need for other components. And the other one is, in the game, the engine yeah. is a twin-turbo V8. I, did, I never thought that sounded that special in the game, but it, although it had twin electric motors and 1,100 horsepower in total. But you've done something more interesting. What have you done? Well, this sounds even more special. So, uh, so yeah, what we've got in the back of, uh, in the back of this yeah, car yeah. Is, um, is a 5.2 litre naturally aspirated V10. <laughs> so Which we... isn't an Audi engine, is it? Because it's every, not an Audi if, engine, if most no. people hear 5.2 litre V10, they go, oh, the Audi engine. But it's not, is it? No, it's not, it's not an Audi engine, no. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a bespoke modified um, engine for this car, specifically. Yeah. It, it will absolutely scream at more than 10,000 RPM. <laughs> Naturally aspirated yeah. for, for um, excellent throttle response and, uh, and V10 for that, that, again, that sensory overload of, of full noise at, at when mm. it screams at 10,500 RPM. Yeah, that really so I don't think I'm giving any games away when we say that that is a race engine in the back yeah, of yeah, this. It's yeah. an LMP It's an LMP drive engine. engine, yeah. And then gearbox off the back of it yeah, is a sequential so, manual, I guess. Uh, yeah, so off the back, yeah, uh, mm. seven speed um, sequential manual box. Um, again, bespoke to the car. Mm. And what makes the, the whole unit really special is that it's, uh, it's a stress unit. So um, all the rear suspension is hung off this, uh, this bespoke um, gearbox casing. Uh, and it effectively makes up the rear structure of, uh, yeah. of the car. So, so what you've basically taken is you've taken a Vision Gran Turismo car and gone, we like the look and design of it, but we can turn it into what most people understand as a relatively conventional racing I suppose race it is, car, it is more conventional when you think about uh, a race car, yeah. Mm. And uh, we, we wanted the best overall package to give uh, the, the optimum customer experience. Yeah. Uh, that, that incredible driver experience and, and the noise, as I say, of the, of the, of the V10 screaming behind you at 10,500 RPM. Yeah. It's going to be like no other. Um, <laughs> Let, let's have a walk down the yeah. side because it is quite a thing to look at. 
as you go down. Yeah. So, so aero obviously plays a really big role yeah, in what we're looking at here. As it did with the concept, clearly. So we mm. um, start here with the, uh, the big splitter and front wing. Um, yep. that's, that's providing a, a lot of front downforce in itself. And then that guides the air under these, uh, these full length tunnels, which go all the way through to the back of the car. Yeah. Uh, it, and so if you crouch down at the well. front, you can, you can see you the can tunnel see the pretty tunnels much all immediately, yeah. doing it all the way back, can't yeah. you? So underbody air is obviously really efficient. Uh, mm. it, uh, downforce per drag is really, really good to, to utilize that area. Uh, and yeah. as I say, those tunnels feed into a diffuser, full length, um, full length tunnels feeding into a massive diffuser at the back of the car yeah. here. Uh, <laughs> and obviously all complemented by a fixed rear wing. So we're talking 1,200 kilos of downforce in total? Well, we'll exceed that quite comfortably. Actually. Was that what so they that quoted was, in the game? That was, was that the, just like, well, that was, yeah. that was one of our kind of attribute targets for the car. Mm -hmm. um, having done extensive CFD and, and wind tunnel testing, um, I'm, I'm fairly confident we'll exceed that quite comfortably. There's a smile on your face. Yeah. This is always yeah, encouraging, yeah, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> I, I am quite impressed that you've managed to get the McLaren logo as nice, part of the air cooling yeah, yeah. and the chimney. So the, the, those are chimney vents, aren't they, for the, for the heat from the, the exhaust, exhaust coming out? Yeah, yeah. 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 So the, obviously the exhaust exit right at the back of the car. Mm. Um, but yeah, those, uh, those aid cooling at, uh, at that point there. But we're talking about 1,000 kilos? Less than, yeah. Less, less than 1,000 Less than 1,000 in, considerably less dry. It'll be the lightest McLaren we've, uh, we've ever built uh, yeah. outside of F1. And that contributes to it being uh, the fastest McLaren outside of F1 uh, that we've ever built. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Yeah. Right, uh, can we have a look in the car? Can yeah, we open the that. canopy? Yeah, so right. I need to explain that this is a this is a prototype system at the moment, but you can um, tell because it's wearing funny paint joy. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if a customer specced it like this. It looks terrific. It does look good. So pop the latches, I think that should be. So if you grab yep. one side. So this this, uh, this, lift. this mechanism and how the canopy opens yeah. is how the production. Oh. So lift up and then slide forward. Fighter jet style. <laughs> that is and It's got this amazing. full wrap around polycarbonate screen, gives you yeah. maximum visibility. So that's one piece around, polycarbonate yeah. all the way around. Yeah. That gives really good side and forward visibility. Yeah. The only thing that's um, that's kind of hindering that, or, or, or that you really see, is the uh, the tub spar. So that's um, yeah. That's kind of our so, halo. It's, yeah. um, it's a rollover protection structure that goes straight into the carbon monocoque, the bespoke carbon monocoque here, and that, uh, that gives the car its, uh, its safety structure. Amazing, as a single seater, central driving yeah. position, that, that whole aspect of it, especially when you look out and you see these sort of sharp edges on the flanks yeah. and everything, <clears throat> it looks terrific. So what I think is interesting is that McLaren famously for your road cars, you have clean steering wheels and then you put your controls elsewhere. Obviously nowhere else to put controls here. So you've done a race steering wheel. Well, that, yeah, that's it. The, the steering wheel you see in the car again, it's a, it's a prototype wheel. Yeah. Um, we're working on, on the functionality of that, but yeah, all the controls need to be uh, uh, kind of amalgamated on that wheel. So yeah. it, it will be race inspired um, with, with, the, uh, with the dash in the middle there, the, the, the screen, and uh, the yeah. driver is strapped in with, the, uh, with these six point harnesses. Um, yeah. A into molded a, seat, I guess. A molded seat. Does yeah. get, do you, get, you get a seat fitting. Exactly, yeah. And I'm guessing you have to you just slide the pedals to fit. Yeah, so the, uh, the pedals are, on a, on a, are adjustable, they slide forward and back. And uh, yeah, so every customer goes through a, a full kind of seat fit process yeah. to get them as comfortable as they possibly can. Yeah, yeah. And I'm intrigued by this because it looks like, sort of looks like carbon, but it's not. Kevlar, yeah. It's, Ke it's Kevlar, is yeah. it? Yeah, okay. Kevlar. So Kevlar headrest and side restraints here in the canopy. Yeah. Um, so they are either head side of your head when it slides yeah. back yeah. in. Yeah. And you, yeah. Yeah. But you, but yeah, so you can feel them and they do the job of, of restraining the head in, in, a, in the case of a, of a crash, but you can't see them. So no. they're, they're far enough back that that visibility is, uh, is, is unimpeded is fully, as you exactly, look forward. Yeah. But I, do, I thought that was a neat bit of integration, having a mirror yeah. up on there. And I assume yes. that's fed from a camera. Yeah, so, so we've got the camera pointing uh, out the back here on yep. the, in the central position, uh, mm. and then the screen is above the, uh, above yeah. the driver's eye line there. What do the other buttons up here do? Uh, so we've got kill switch and fire extinguisher. Aha. Uh -huh. Pumped in fire extinguisher. Yeah, the, the yeah. one put that far away from the steering wheel so no one presses it by accident. <laughs> and these yeah. couple of air vents down here? Yeah, so we've got AC. Um, oh, it's, sweet. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, it, it would be hot work, I think, if, uh, if, we, if we didn't have that. <laughs> but do you ever, did you ever think about doing it with a second seat? Uh, no, I don't, I don't think that ever was a consideration. It, this Keep is, it this central. This is all about the driver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. all about yeah. that experience. Right, so some numbers on it. 5.2 V10, what does that develop? So we're looking at about 8, 840 PS uh, with ram air even more, so about 870. Downforce we've spoken about, it yeah. would be considerably more than, than 1200 kilos, that's yeah. 150 miles an hour. This will go yeah. much faster, so um, we're aiming for a, a V max of more than 200. 0 to 100 yeah. kilometers an hour in uh, less than 2.8, so uh, it'll be fast. Yeah, How fast be is fast. it going to go around here? 
Uh, well, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, we should, yeah, we should talk about what we've been doing today and what we're aiming to do. This is a validation prototype of, of, of the project, of the, of the P94 project. This is first day out the, out the box. Um, yeah. So we're, we're working on clutch, calibration, gear shifts, you know, just dining out any, any issues. It's kind of an extended shakedown while we're, while we're here at, uh, at Anglesey. Yeah. Um, and, and this, I guess, we, is, is a typical sort of first day out with a prototype. Yeah, yeah. It's we, just we, like, yeah. can it get itself going? Because I know it's done dyno work, hasn't it? We've so. done, yeah, we've done extensive dyno work, both mm -hmm. uh, both engine in isolation and engine gearbox to, to work on those things as much as possible. Mm -hmm. But there's nothing like putting it together and actually getting it out on track and testing it. Um, and then that's what this car uh, will go off and do, a full uh, full test program. So it's going to go and do other circuits, I guess. It's not going to yeah. stick at Anglesey. So you're yeah, going to go and take it around. Circuits. And then we'll start getting to the kind of the limit performance of the car and you know the dynamics yeah. of it and, and running up the miles making sure it's uh, making sure it's durable yeah. and, uh, and, and usable for the for the end customer. But the, the aim is not that it will ever race though is it? It's for no. it's go no, out, so it's, try your best, yeah, see if you can get close to it. Yeah it's a track car yeah so we, mm. we haven't built it to race regulations. Mm. Certain regulations we have chosen to adhere to so yep. safety regulations um, yeah. from, from FIA uh, I think that's important to note, but uh, no, it's not eligible for any race series. Yeah. It's really rare for us to be allowed to in so early in a car's development, so thank you so much for having us for the day today. It's been a really interesting day. Here's a little video diary of what it's been like. Shall we close this up? Yeah. It's been eventful. Although extensively tested on dyno, it's not a simple car to run. The race spec V10 has to be preheated and whenever it's not on track, it's plugged into laptops. So it's now about 9.15 and the track opened at 9 o'clock and the car was sort of meant to go out then, but because it's a prototype and it has never turned a wheel before, there's a few teething issues. Come and have a look. Mind your head. So yeah, as you can see, things are still plugged into the car. It was up on jacks. They've got the wheel hub, they were trying to get the wheels off it and the air gun was going quite heavily. There's a little trickle of water around, people in the cabin. Over here there's guys on laptops just checking through data. Hopefully it won't be too much longer until it's going out. Driving duties are carried out by Le Mans winner Guy Smith, which gives you an idea of the performance parameters McLaren is looking at. So the little niggles mean there have been about an hour behind schedule now. They had a little electrical problem which meant that the engine wasn't getting the right signals to fire up. But Guy's now in it, they've had the engine running once, engine covers back in, all good to go. So the next stage is push him out of the garage and he literally goes out and does one installation lap just to make sure the car's working. Just listen to that thing, it sounds absolutely wild. Can't believe it, seeing a prototype move for the first time ever, I mean, we never get to see that. Moment of truth now. Can he actually go and do a lap in it? Did you see that as it left the pit lane? It's all hopping, it's the clutch, it's got an auto clutch in it to find. But here it is, out doing its very first lap at low speed, obviously. It's quite wild though, seeing a prototype car turn the wheel for the first time, do its first ever lap. Or maybe not do its first ever lap. It stopped on circuit. Mm. 
It's not entirely unexpected. It's literally done half a lap. The car features an automatic clutch to make it simpler to drive, and getting that adjusted was the main aim of the day. Sometimes an adjustment means it doesn't make it out of the pit lane at all. Sometimes the gear changes are too savage or the engine bay heat overwhelms the alternator. It completes about four laps over the whole morning. These issues are all part of running a brand new prototype. During the downtime, I'm able to have a sit in it. Right, that is the best car cockpit I've ever sat in for just the, the whole wraparound feel. It's like you've got a giant visor. So that whole atmosphere of it feeling like being in a fighter jet is completely there. And the seats will obviously be molded to each person, but the position you're in, it, you sit much higher than you do in most Formula race cars. It just feels sublime in here. In the afternoon, a corner is turned. It runs four lap stints regularly, and Guy is able to start using the performance. We never heard the V10 at full 10,500 RPM chat, but boy does it sound good anyway, fully reminiscent of old F1 cars. A sneaky stopwatch reveals it lapping in the low 1 minute 20s, nearly 10 seconds a lap faster than the back mono R I'd driven round here a couple of weeks before and this was its first ever shakedown. The progress made within a day is genuinely mind-boggling. Yeah, but that's a whole load of stress and you need an entire race team. It would have been much quicker if they'd done it on here. 